Tim, first, I got to say thank you so much for doing this interview. But more importantly, I got one word for you, and that is finally. For as long as I've been doing music reporting for the last 30, 35 years, I have never had the chance to interview you, and it has been on my bucket list. And it's finally <laughs> three decades and a half, I finally get to speak to the legend. My friend, thank you for this interview. But more importantly, man, Thank you for what you've done for Canadian music, for Canadian broadcasting, representing the way you have for so many years. Well, uh, I, I guess I would just respond to the finally word as, you know, why hurry into things, Rudy? <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That, that's very true. I mean, why? I, I don't hurry much anymore, so it's, it's okay, you know. You know, like, but you know, when when you look back at your your career and everything that you've done, uh, you know, through music, uh, as a radio host, um, I mean, I need therapy. <laughs> but do you realize Wait. the the breakthroughs that you've done and opened the doors for so many other uh, Canadians over the years? Um, no, I I know I don't I I don't I'm not aware of much of that. Um, and as far as looking back, when you say looking back, it's something I, I don't do much of because it scares me to death um, <laughs> most of the time. But, uh, you know, I have moments of being proud of what I've done. And I guess I guess what you're saying is sometimes I do get a musician, a younger musician coming up to me and, you know, being being a fan and just being really cool and and kind of thanking me. So, um uh, I don't know what I've paved the way for or, or what it has been, but I guess just over the years of my attitude towards making music and the business and all that uh, has been printed. Some of it's been printed and, and some of it's just sort of, I don't know, transmitted through my music center, the energy of my music. Um, I, I'm happy to pass on anything that's that's good and positive for musicians anyway. I'm just curious, though, has the OPP ever honored you? Because, man, you put them on the map when you used to wear those baseball caps. You had everybody else doing the same thing. Well, they they were actually quite nice to us. Um, uh, the OPP, yeah, they were they were always really nice, and they would they would show up in in our dressing rooms um, a lot. And uh, one second, I got to decline this call. Yeah, no problem. Uh, yeah, okay. Freaking managers calling. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's what it was. It was a manager calling. Like, go away. Um, anyway, I, until like you know. So um, anyway, they were really nice. They show up in our dressing rooms many times after gigs because they were doing security at a lot of my shows out in the, you know, the Midland Ontarios and the Sudburys and the, you know just that kind of thing. And they'd always bring a hat in and get a picture and, and that sort of stuff. So. And once in a while, when I lived in Collingwood, I used to go visit, uh, I would visit my children all the time in Toronto as a separated dad, a divorced dad. So I would drive down to Toronto on Wednesdays and every weekend. And, uh, you know, going back sometimes, they 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 got to recognize my van and they, they pulled me over just to say hi sometimes. Hey, and, and the other time, go, hey, you, you, you were going a little fast. I'm like, well, it's two in the morning. I want to get home, you know, so. But, you know, it's kind of funny that you and I are speaking right now because as we speak, we're only a few hours away from uh, summer officially arriving. Patio mm -hmm. Lanterns is considered a summer song uh, for the decades. I mean, when you think about your music as it relates to life itself, what are your thoughts on that? Because, like I said, Patio Lanterns is an iconic summer song. Well, thank you for that. I mean, when it was written, it's... It... You're just writing a song and you're just getting a song to where you love it and you don't know what's going to happen. As a matter of fact, I make a joke about making, about writing songs sometimes when you finish them up. It's like uh, when, once they're done, it's like taking them out back and shooting them because you can't really control what's going to happen. But it really did relate to a lot of people. And I think, I think for songwriters, what you need to do is simply just you know, write your songs, but include your audience in in it. Uh, think about you know, and I don't mean you're 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 catering to uh, a group that you want to be successful with. It's just think of your audience. It's just think you know, include 
the human beings that you'd be able to relate to and they'd be able to relate to you, if that makes any sense. No, it definitely does. But um, okay. do you think rock and roll has changed and just music in general? And the reason why I say that is because, again, I remember uh, your music when it was being played, not just on rock stations, but on top 40 stations. Top 40, mm -hmm. to me, is not top 40 as it was back in the day when you heard a rock song like yours. You could hear a country song, say, from Kenny Rogers, and then you can hear an R&B song, say, from Cool and the Gang, all on one radio station. Do you think that is changing also the style and how rock and roll is being represented or rock being re represented today? Do you think that's changed? Yeah, it should change. Gen generations demand the change. And, and whatever, whatever language you speak uh, with your music, however you say it to relate to your generation, it's a beautiful thing. So um, I, I welcome that and love it. And, and you know, some of it, some of it, I'm a fan of, and some of it, I, uh, you know, I go, yeah, okay, I see that. But uh, um, I, I love the fact that that it, it's always changing. And so, yes, to your answer, yes, it has changed um, from 1970, 1960s, the 60s and 70s. There was a pretty huge change. Um, so, uh, you know, and then the, the 80s, another huge change. And then the 90s, another huge change. And just uh, 2000s, it just keeps going. You know, each generation brings with it their own music and their own voice. <clears throat> and I love that. And some generations get re-represented. The Elma Combo was supposed to be back in April in full form. Uh, until the coronavirus, COVID-19, kicked in, and yep. now we're sort of waiting. But they did make an announcement recently on their recording record label. My friend, you are part of that. Congratulations on that. Thank what you. made you decide to hook up with them? Well, I, I like what they, I like what they're doing, and I like what they said. Um, and I mean, I had sort of a couple other options I was looking at. I just sort of like the idea of a small independent label, someone who, um, someone who will let you sort of steer the thing yourself as well, as opposed to just like, well, this is what we do. You know, this is what we do. It's like, I don't want to hear that. I, I, I want to be part of this. This was, this was my album. I, I, this is my art. I, I've t it's taken me a lifetime to sort of make this stuff, and I believe it's one of. I really feel that it's one of the best pieces of work I've done. It's different, and and uh, so I want to. I want to have my hands on the controls somewhat too. So, what is this new recording going to be like? Is it something that you've, you know, done in the past? Is this just another chapter in your life and in your music career that we're going to be hearing soon? Well, um, when I gave my USB key of shame to a friend of mine, Greg Wells, who's a very successful record producer, who was in my band, by the way, at 17 years old, and then moved to Los Angeles and has had numerous, huge, massive, successful hits, records producing. You know, he was at my house here and on his way back to Los Angeles, and, and I said, ah, I'm giving you the key of shame. And it was just had some sort of laid, more laid back stuff. So more focused, like my all we are's and easy to tame and just sort of my, my sort of more vibey. It's not, I'm not going to say laid. I, I use the word laid back, but just it's still intense and heavy, but it's, uh, it's not like rock and roll duties and I'm a wild party. There's a bit of that on there because that's just part of who I am, but it was more that sort of other style. And, and Greg got back and went, this is a side of you that hasn't been exposed enough, I, I feel. So let's focus on these tunes right here. He says, I love it. I want to produce this. And meanwhile, I missed that. I missed that email for like, for like a month. It was sitting in my inbox. And all of a sudden, I got an email from him one day that said, hey, I'm sorry if my enthusiasm was over, was over the top. <laughs> and then I looked at the previous email. I went, oh, my God, I missed his first email. It said, come to Los Angeles. Let's record this, which was a lot of fun. Do we have a name for the album? And do we know when the album's going to be out? Yeah, it's uh, the album's called The Big Fantasize. And also there's there's a whole studio album there. And then there's also four live tracks that I decided to put on there called The Big Live. So it's like a, kind of like a, a 
another part of the package. So if it, you know if you're talking about hardware like CDs, will be two CDs. If you're talking about vinyl, there'll be two two uh, pieces of vinyl in there. So uh, the single's coming out on the 26th of this month, which is next Friday. First single's called Wishes, which was kind of serendipitously 10 years ago. I opened. I never open up books at medical offices or I'll maybe open up a magazine article, but this is a book and it said book of poems. And I'm like, I don't need, I don't usually read poetry. And the very first thing I opened up, it wasn't the beginning of the book. I just sort of randomly opened up was this poem called wishes. And I think it was written by in the forties by a person called AC child. And, uh, I went, wow, I really like this poem. I, I like the so I ordered the book. I remember ordering the book and and starting to write the song and it took ten years to finish because I couldn't I couldn't finish it. It was just I sort of got part of the verses done and then I'd, you know, kind of just hack away at it and walk away from it. And then one day just at the house here a couple months ago, um, I went, I gotta finish this song. Like why why am I why is there a block here? I just stopped after the verses, and I just kept, I stopped playing guitar, and I just kept singing sort of a little melody. And went, okay, that that sounds like it belongs now. Well, our lives get wound up so My, I guess my whole message about that is, for songwriters, never give up. Never give up on a song. Um, there's always the other side of the mountain. That you know, you just have to find the, the the parts have to find you. And I always look at it like that. I always feel like I'm a song's roadie. You know, it's telling me what it needs. I, I'm not. I'm not the one going. Oh, I came up with this part, and I came up with that part. No, the song was telling me. No, that's not right. Try something else. No, that's not right. Try something. Yeah, more like that. More like that. Okay, that's it. Amen to that, my friend. Definitely. Yeah. Look, before we start wrapping this up, I'm just curious. Do you remember the first time you played at the Elma Combo? Uh, I don't remember exact date. I'm I'm terrible with with those sort of details, but I do remember playing there. It was a pretty sweaty joint, and uh, it was upstairs. And it's completely transformed. I don't know if you've seen it. I've seen it. I've I've been in it. I've actually recorded it, and it looks amazing oh, what they've done. Yeah, that's yeah, pretty, pretty, uh, pretty incredible. Pretty high tech, and you know the whole fact that you know you can stream the whole thing there, which is which is quite nice. Yeah, I'm still looking forward to hopefully when these things, these things settle down and we are allowed to go back safely to venues like that. I'm looking forward to it. And I got to yeah. assume that somewhere along the line, you're going to be performing there also. So cross fingers on that. Cause I want to be in the audience for that, uh, for that show. But are you doing any live streaming or anything like that in the meantime, while we're waiting uh, a little bit, I've done one live Facebook thing and then I'll be, I'll be doing another one on the 26th on release day of, of wishes. I'm going to do a Facebook live uh, thing around 8 PM Toronto time, Eastern daylight time. So fantastic. Uh, yeah. Yeah, right. looking, looking forward to that. So social media, yeah. where do we go to follow you so we know what's happening? Uh, what's that? Social media, where do we go to follow you so we know everything that's going uh, on? Kim Mitchell, Kim Mitchell, uh, the Kim Mitchell on um, Twitter, the Kim Mitchell on Facebook and uh, Instagram. I think it's just Kim Mitchell Band or Kim Mitchell. Yeah, Kim Mitchell Band, I believe. Fantastic. I Again, you were, yeah. You're right. You know what? 30 years, it was worth the wait. I wish we could talk longer, but I don't take more of your time but i know you and i'll do another interview i'm hoping it's going to be in person because then i got a ton of questions to ask you my friend oh, cool. thank you thank you again for the All interview right. thank nice, you for nice. the music well Just thank thanks. you rudy nice speaking with you man. you take care my friend we'll all right you. all right bye-bye and i'd ask no more of love